Hey everyone, this is Big Face from Big Face Robotics, back with part 8 of the Big Wheel Bot video series. Uh, for anyone following along, you'll know I've been working on this for quite some time now. And what I wanted to do in this video is actually set myself some, uh, some goals, some targets to reach by the end of the video to try and uh, help keep the progress on track. So, very quickly I'll go through what I'm hoping to achieve. Uh, anyone that saw the last video will know uh, there was a few issues to resolve. The first one being the straight line driving of the robot. Hopefully that's a quick fix and I can get that one sorted. Uh, I want to do some outdoor tests um, on different surfaces, grass and sort of paved areas to test the uh, camera encoder and make sure that the settings are, are still valid for various types of surfaces and, and lighting conditions. The next thing I want to do after that is, um, is program a test path for the robot to follow. So now I can drive in, or hopefully once I've fixed the straight line driving, I can drive in straight lines and turn quite accurately. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to, to program a, a path sequence, maybe a square because it's nice and simple and see how the robot performs. I'll take some measurements as it's driving around. Uh, while it's doing that, I want to be logging the data from the camera encoder, so measuring the distance travelled, and the uh, IMU for your angle. Then I'm hopefully going to take that data and reconstruct the, the robot path, and then we'll see how accurate the, the readings actually are. Um, after that, I want to start uh, investigating image mapping. So as I'm uh, as the robot's driving around in that square sequence or whatever I choose to do, I'm going to capture some uh, images using the, the camera there and log them. Then offline I will uh, work on analysing the images and seeing if I can match robot positions to images and uh, and that's how I'm hoping to, uh, to try and start building some sort of map and have the robot uh, localise itself. That's going to be a, a challenge and will probably be a whole separate video but I'm hoping by the end of this one to have the data logged, the path reconstructed and the camera images at different points in that path to later analyse. So with that in mind, I'm going to get started on uh, making this robot drive in a straight line. So the current setup for the PID controller for when the robot is driving forward is to set one of the wheels, in this case the left wheel, to a set speed. Um, and that's the speed reference sent to the robot and then the PID is done to the right wheel so this uh, the speed of the right wheel will vary up and down to try and maintain the the heading of the robot the, you can see the issue with this uh, when the robot first starts up and that is that the left wheel uh, gets up to speed very quickly and it takes a little while for the PID to catch up on the right wheel so the robot ends up ends up uh, driving off on a bit of a curve and then later correcting itself. Uh, to sort this out I'm going to rewrite the PID loops um, for both wheels well, and use both wheels in the control so I'll set both wheels to a, a speed and then the PID controller will vary the speed of each wheel adding a bit to one wheel and taking off the other and vice versa to maintain the correct heading. And that's what I'm going to try and get that tuned up and see if I get any better results. So I'll spend a bit of time tuning up the new PID controller and I'm getting much improved results. I'm not getting that jerky movement at the start when the robot sort of takes off and I'm getting good control as it drives in a straight line both forwards and backwards. The other benefit of this is I can use the full speed range of the robot before I had to limit the speed of the left wheel to allow some range for the right wheel to correct the heading. Now because I'm adding a bit to one wheel and taking off the other and then vice versa I can drive the robot through its full range of speeds. So a good improvement, I'm happy with it. So the next job on the to-do list was to do some outdoor testing with the robot and see how accurate the camera encoder was on various different surfaces. So that's what you're seeing here, the robot driving on the path, uh, later on some grass areas to see how, uh, how accurate and repeatable the encoder is. And I found it's pretty repeatable. 
I think I might need to do a bit of tuning with the calibration settings, but overall I'm quite happy with this. And I'm going to move on to now programming the test sequence, and I'll do some more accuracy measurements after that, particularly on turning accuracy as well. So with all the previous work to get the rope to drive in a straight line by a given distance and turn to a given angle, programming a, a sequence to follow was fairly trivial and that's what I've done. So I've got a little program to drive forward 400 millimeters. Uh, these tape markers are, are the corners of this square. So turn 90, drive 400 and so on until it's back to where it begins. And I've also programmed a camera scan at each corner. So I'm going to run this test and see how far away it is from completing a square. The back cast is just about on that bit of tape there. Um, and then begins probably a fairly long process of calibrating and making adjustments to try and get this more accurate. So let's see how this goes. So there we go, it's not too bad, uh, it's quite a bit of work to do there I think. You can see some of the turns were off a little bit, uh, that's because the Raspberry Pi is just checking to see when a uh, an angle uh, has been reached, whether it's reached its set point or not, and I think that's stepping the program on a bit too too quickly before it's actually settled into, a, into the right uh, orientation. And I also think I need to do a bit more work on the um, calibration of the camera encoder, including error handling if it does miss a uh, some key points or some matches. I'm not sure I'm handling that very well at the moment, but they first go on a proof of concept. Not too bad. Um, so I'll continue work. After many hours of adjusting settings, including the turn PID parameters, and how the Raspberry Pi is checking that the robot has reached the required angle. I was just checking once, and now I'm checking multiple times to make sure the robot is at the correct angle. I've now got a reasonable square pattern being driven by the robot. I've also set up the data login, so I'm collecting distance travelled as well as your angles and servo positions as the robot moves around, and I'm capturing images as the camera scans. Uh, we're going to have a look at all of that next. So this is the data log that the robot collected as it drove the square path that you've just seen. This is stored as a text file and you can see the lines of text holding the various values that the robot collected. The lines starting with a 1, they represent data collected as the robot was scanning with the camera and these lines hold the servo positions, the yaw value and a reference to the image that was collected. The lines starting with a 0 is data collected at other points as the robot drove around. I'll also show you here the images that the robot collected as it drove around and as you can see they're all reasonably good quality images although low resolution and I'll be looking at doing something with these probably in the next video when we look at analyzing these to try and match images to one another. But for now I want to take the data log and see if I can reconstruct the robot's path using the data that was collected. So I took some Python code that I have previously used for plotting robot paths and modified it slightly to suit the new data format so I'm ignoring the data captured when the robot is scanning and I fed in the data log and this is the path that resulted. So you can see it's a nice square representation of the path followed by the robot and I'm only actually capturing data at key points as the robot's driving around so the end of straight runs and during turns. So that makes the map quite simple to plot. And you'll see from this that the square doesn't quite join up at the end. And I went back through the video footage and captured a couple of frames from the beginning and end of that video sequence to see where the robot actually ended up. And that's what you see here. And you can see that it doesn't finish in its starting position. 
and the map is quite representative of this. So there we go, I've worked my way nicely through the to-do list in this video. I've managed to sort out the straight line control of the robot, that's working nicely. And I've tuned up the turning to be a bit more accurate as well. I've tested the camera encoder in various scenarios. Uh, seems to work much better outdoors actually, on grass and other textured surfaces. A bit better than indoors where I've had to put down this grid pattern on the floor. That's, the robot's not using that for anything else other than having some points on the, on the floor to pick up with the camera and measure how far it's moved. I'm pleased I'm now running the robot in autonomous mode rather than using the remote control. I'm only using that to start and stop the sequence now because I wanted to get away from uh, using solely remote control. It didn't seem like a, a robot with me doing all the controlling of it. So that's working and I've obviously got the path reconstructed as the robot drives around and gathering data so that's a really good step forward. The next job is to start looking at some of the images that I showed previously in this video that the camera is capturing as the robot drives around and start doing some image processing on those. But for now that's it for this video. Uh, come back for the next one where I'll show you what I've uh, been up to. Uh, that's it for now. As always thank you very much for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing uh, for more videos and I'll see you soon.